And after hundreds and hundreds of Ks testing these shoes, my favorite one of the three is... Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben Parks, 225 Marathon. And today we're gonna to be testing three market leading plated training shoes. The Nike Zoomfly 5, the Puma Deviate 2 and the Saucony Speed 3. These shoes are all about bridging the gap between your everyday sort of easy run shoe and that full on race shoe. Perfect for doing those speed sessions, those tempo runs. Yes, you can use them in some races as well if you don't want to splash out the big bucks on those fully carbon plated race shoes. We're going to do a comparison between all of these shoes find out what I'm gonna be using in my training, but most importantly, what I recommend you use in your training for how you go about your running. I have already done a completely full, in-depth review of each of these shoes individually. If you wanna check that out, we'll link to that down below over on Ben Parks The Extra Mile. Before we get into the video, guys, you may have noticed this lovely part-time athlete t-shirt. It's available on benparks.com. Check it out and feel free to use code YouTube for 10% off your order. We've got amazing training plans, running hats, and all sorts of gear to help you out with your running. Benparks.com, check it out. Right, back to the video. Right, starting with the price. Well, the most expensive one coming here is the Saucony, 165 pounds. Then the Nike at 145 and the Puma at 140 pounds. We'll put the other currencies up on the screen. In terms of stack height, the difference between the back of the shoe and the front of the shoe, well, the Saucony and the Puma are exactly the same. 36 mil at the back of the shoe and 28 mil at the front, giving an eight millimeter drop. The Nike, slightly different, 40 mil at the back, 32 at the front. So a little bit more stack height there, but still giving that eight millimeter drop. In terms of weight, now we're chatting about this quite a lot today. Puma, 315 grams. These are all for my shoes in a UK size 12. The Saucony coming in at 270, super lightweight. Nike topping the scales here at 359 grams. Almost 90 grams heavier than the Saucony. And yes, you're very much gonna notice that out on the run. So as you've seen with the title of this video, these shoes are all about the plates. But the Puma has a carbon composite plate. It's about 70% carbon in there. The Saucony has a nylon plate. The Nike has a full carbon plate running throughout the shoe. Right, there are the facts and figures. If you want even more facts and figures, then check out the dedicated review videos. And as I said, we'll link to those down below and at the end of this video. Right, now let's get stuck in to the first section, which is all about money and the value these shoes will give you. So in this section, we're chatting about things like durability, versatility, and the price. First things first, with the Puma, absolutely loving this Puma Grip outsole, much better than the outgoing, that's the model it replaced. Just so much traction there, it is lasting really, really well. We've done about 50, 60K in the shoe so far, can't tell I've done anything. So this shoe, I really think is gonna hold up really well. Such a versatile shoe, can cover all sorts of different distances, 5Ks, 10Ks, half marathons, marathons, and all sorts of different speeds. It's gonna feel comfortable, easy pace, right up to your all out 5K pace as well. At 140 pounds, the cheapest one here. And with the Pumas, you can normally get some good deals on them as well. So really fantastic value that this shoe is offering. Right, moving on to the Saucony Speed, the outsole, on this is fairly minimal not quite as grippy as uh, the Puma one there. It really doesn't look like it's gonna last very long. It's holding up okay for me so far. I've got nothing really to indicate. It's, it's definitely not gonna last as long as the Puma, but for most people, I think it'll be fine. Some of you guys have given me some feedback as well, saying how well this shoe is holding up in the long term. So yeah, no reason to indicate it's gonna be a poor performing shoe on that durability. For me, it's just a little bit more versatile than the Puma because the plate in the Saucony is just not quite as stiff. It's really a little bit more pleasant to run in at those slightly slower speeds for your easy run paces as well. But just once you get it up to speed, these shoes are so similar and perform really well. It is on a little bit on the expensive side, 165 pounds, 25 pounds more expensive than the Puma. Every penny counts these days, so slightly marked down there for that expensive price. Finally, the Nike Zoomfly 5. Now, I've done about 200Ks in the shoes. There's really no sign of anywhere in these shoes so far. There's just a little bit of scratching here in this. This is like the carrier foam that Nike used. You can see the Zoom X through the little, little hole in the middle there. But yeah, holding up fantastically well. For me, it's just really not as versatile in this segment. The full carbon plated shoe is 
pretty stiff here. It's really not the most comfortable shoe at that slower run paces for me. With that weight as well, it really does limit. For me, I look at this shoe as like a long run cruising shoe, something you can go out marathon pace for a very long time. It will hold up pretty well over that sort of distance. 145 pounds, yeah, it's, it's just that's where shoes are in this sort of segment at the moment. So not expensive, but certainly not on the cheap side either. So with all the rankings in today's video, we're giving three points for the winner two points for second place and then one point for third place and then we'll add all of those points up at the end and get a winner. So in terms of the value section, I've got to give it to the Puma here. Three points for the Puma, two points for the Saucony and one point for the Nike. Quickly guys, if you are finding this video useful, please smash that like button and let us know down in the comments, do you run in plated shoes? It'd be great to get that sort of feedback. Some people love them, some people really don't. So let me know your thoughts on plated shoes. Right, moving on to have a chat about comfort, talking about things like hot spots, heel rubbing, heel slips, true to size, lockdown, overheating, all that sort of stuff. Starting out with the Puma. This was super comfortable out the box. Really loving this updated heel design. If you look at the pre previous version, it really was quite nasty here at the back. People had a lot of Achilles issues, some heel slip and stuff. Puma have done a really good job in listening to that feedback. Fantastically comfortable heel there, no slipping at all. Breathable mesh throughout the top here. Good airflow through the shoe. Achieved a nice lockdown fit as well. Didn't need to use the heel lock lacing. In terms of width of the shoe, really good. I've had no issues on at all. I do have quite narrow feet, but I think unless you've got some super wide feet, this shoe will be just fine for you. Moving on to the Saucony, very similar to the Puma, out the box, just brilliantly comfortable. It is a little bit more on the wider side for some wider fitted runners some wider fitted, wider footed runners, you will really appreciate that extra width that this updated model has. You can see I've had to lace this a little bit tighter there. So a bit more space and a bit more room for your feet to breathe. With the plate being not quite so stiff, it just adds, to, as I said earlier, adds to that extra comfort at those slower speeds. And the fact it's so light as well, it's just comfortable to run in. You just don't notice it on the end of your feet quite as much. And no issues with any sort of heel slip, no hot spots. I'm really enjoying how much it's looking after my legs with the PWR Run foam that Saucony have put in this. Again, very similar to the Puma Nitro Elite foam, which is where this big bright color section through here. This is just the regular Nitro foam. Really nice, really responsive, super comfortable to be running in. And then finally, the Nike shoe. This did take a little bit longer for me to break in. I did have a few hot spots in those first few runs. They went away after a while. It's a comfortable shoe. Again, no issues with any sort of heel slipping and I really can't mark it down too much other than the fact, yeah, it's just a little bit on the heavy side. And then finally, all three of these were pretty good on the sizing. They were all true to size for me. I would recommend just going for your regular size that you usually choose. Right, in terms of scoring for this, well, we've got to give, I think, top marks here to the Saucony, just because it's a little bit wider, which I think for most runners, they will really appreciate. Uh, second place to the Puma. It's really, really hard to split these two shoes. They're both fantastic shoes. And then, uh, because I did have a, a few hotspot issues in the Nike, then one point for that. Right, moving on to have a chat about why we're all here, let's be honest, about performance. How fast are these shoes? Well, long-term viewers of the channel will have seen me. I've done sessions in all of these shoes. You can check out all my training for Valencia Marathon in these shoes if you want to. We'll link to that playlist down below. But for now, we're gonna have a chat about things like the plate, the propulsion, the weight, the grip, the stability, and that sort of thing. So starting out with the Puma, it's very, very similar to the Saucony shoe here in terms of performance. I did a session the other day. I could not split these two shoes apart in terms of speed. Both quick shoes without a doubt. Not all that super shoe speed. You know, when you're spending 200 pounds plus on a shoe, you are gonna see a benefit there. But in this bracket, they are very fast shoes. The Puma, as we said earlier in the view, the Puma gripper here is fantastic. It's so stable, it's so planted. You feel so confident when you're out on a run, cornering in the wet and things. It's a fantastic winter shoe overall. The Saucony for me just has that slight edge on speed. I just think it's that little bit lighter and the back end of some races, you're really gonna notice that extra lightness. So I think if I did put these two head to head in a race, which I will 
be doing soon, then that is just going to edge it if I had to pick one. And even though the plate is a little bit softer, it's still very stable going around corners. You still feel very confident. The wet performance grip in the Saucony is still pretty good. It's not up there with quite this. I think this is the best grippy speed shoe I've ever worn. And then finally the Nike shoe. Well, clearly this is the heaviest shoe. I would not want to be doing any races in this shoe. For me, I've used it in those sort of long run sessions when I'm just going out at sort of marathon pace or half marathon pace, and that is it. It's very good in the wet. The grip on the bottom of the shoe is fantastic. It's very stable, going around corners, and you feel confident in it. It's just really being let down by that extra weight, that extra 90 odd kilos, 90 kilos, 90 grams that you're carrying around on the end of each of your feet, 180 grams total. In the performance section, we're giving the Saucony three points here, the Puma two, and the Nike one. So close between these two, really hard to pick it, but we're giving it for Saucony just with that extra bit of lightweightness. It's gonna look after the legs a little bit better. So let's have a chat about a conclusion who should be buying these type of shoes. For me, the Puma is all about someone that wants a little bit of extra grip on the bottom of their shoe. Maybe a good intro into a plated shoe as well because it's not too stiff. Sometimes people can get these full-on race shoes. It takes a while to get used to them. Maybe they're not running on tarmac all the time. They may be going out some fire roads, some very light trails to do some of their speed work as well. Or it's raining so much at the moment here in the UK. So you just need that little bit of extra grip on the bottom of your shoe. The Socking shoe, yeah, great, fantastic summer shoe. Or if it's dry, just sticking on the tarmac. Super fast, great turnover. Loving the little bit of extra width you get in there as well. It's just a fun, light, fast shoe. Puts a good smile on your face. And then for the Nike shoe, it really is best for someone that's training for some very longer distances, I think, marathons and potentially longer. Take things up to marathon pace. Just a big sort of brutey, cruisy shoe. I've enjoyed running in it. It's just really not my favorite one in this bunch. And then final scores today. Well, the Nike has come last with three points there. The Puma. Oh, so close between these shoes. The Puma second with seven points and the Saucony has just picked it there with eight points. That is the one I would always be going with. As I said, a little bit weather dependent. As long as it's dry, that's the one I'm putting on my feet. The weather's a little bit inclement, we're going off road a little bit slightly, then I'm picking this one without a doubt. So that brings my video to a conclusion. As always guys, let me know your thoughts. Have you run in these shoes? What do you think? Help out the community down below and say what you think your favorite is. What do you like and what do you dislike about these shoes? We always love to hear your feedback and comments. So I'm off to get another run in the bank and we will see you very soon in the next one.